Previously on Two Up and Overloaded. We finally completed our tip-to-tip -tip journey across the northern coast of Borneo. But our adventures in East Malaysia were far from over because we were about to take one more dip in the mysterious and magical Sulu Sea to a very unusual part of the ocean where coral and underwater sea life has thrived. An old World War II bomb site from the Japanese occupation of Malaysia. And we were about to dive into the crater itself. Hey everyone, nice to have you here. We are Tim and Marissa no tear. I ride in the front and I'm in the rear. We travel the world and we pack too much gear. Oh, all the places we'll go. Through rain and through seed and through mud and through snow. Oh, all the, the things, things we'll see. see. We've been to a country or two or three. Oh, all the, the fun, fun we've, we've had. had. You have you along would make us real glad. So give us a like and, and hit subscribe to join us along our epic ride. We woke up that morning to another beautiful sunrise. It just uh, they don't they don't ever end. And you know what made the sunrise even better? Donuts. Donuts. Homemade Malaysian donuts. Oh, man, they're so good. Absolutely delicious. And they had the like little cake things. Yeah, those little like coconut kind of layer oh, yeah, cakes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then tempeh, some kind of tempeh treat. Was that a coconut tempeh treat? Yeah, I'm not sure what it was, uh, but all of it was delicious. Very delicious. Absolutely the best way to start your day is with coconut and sugar and fried bread. <laughs> Yes. Hey everyone, we're about to go snorkeling once again. The owner here, he's such a nice gentleman. He said, hey, I'll take you out to a little lagoon area that's just offshore where you can see some coral. So we're not taking a boat. We're going to apparently walk slash swim over there and see what we can see. What we can see. Yeah, I'm super excited. Marissa went under the water. Marissa <laughs> went under the water. Marissa went under the water. To, to see, see what, what she, she could, could see. see. In the China Sea. Ooh, in the Sulu, Sulu Sea. sea. <laughs> the, the happiest grumpy cat ever. Yes, <laughs> look at this guy. Look at this guy. Yeah. You give an accidental kid? Yeah, buddy, I got one. We could walk right from the guest house where we were staying out into the ocean, and there was a very special place where coral and tropical fish thrived. And it was an actual World War II bomb crater that they had dropped the bomb, it created this crater in the ocean, and that's where all of this sea life had taken root and we could walk there right from the guest house. We could swim there. We could swim Stop there. Yeah, walking. you're right. It was not walking. You swam. <laughs> the, the, the walking distance was like 15 feet and the <laughs> remainder was swimming. Now for the flippers. Flip the flipper, flip the flipper. Sit on the little wall and then put the flippers on. So that's what I'm gonna do. Thank goodness for those flippers though, because oh, yeah. otherwise, you know, it's slow going swimming that far. Yeah, flippers on land, not very good. <laughs> no. Very trip hazardy. If you ever like, they call them flat tires when you're in your sandals and it, it gets stuck on the ground, you almost break an ankle. Oh gosh. But uh, yeah, flippers under the sea, 
Useful. Useful. Jack, <laughs> you learn stuff here, guys. The Battle for Borneo was a successful campaign by Japanese Imperial forces in 1941 to 1942, fighting for control of the island of Borneo. At the time, Borneo was divided between the Dutch East Indies and the British protectorates and crown colonies. The British Brook family ruled Sarawak for almost a century, while the Dutch had Kalimantan, the southern half of the island. But with its rich petroleum and perfect location on the main sea route through the Indochina seas, Borneo was a prime target for Japan. And so, on December 13, 1941, the Japanese invasion began, and the battles for Borneo lasted until the surrender of the Allied troops on April 1, 1942. Though the Japanese occupation of Borneo was brief, only lasting until 1945, they left a huge impression on the island, including bombed out portions of the ocean front, such as this crater that we were swimming into. They surely did leave an impression. Oh. My job's gonna bomb. <laughs> in there yeah we were swimming and like I don't know if anybody watched the reboot of the live-action Little Mermaid but you know like <laughs> the light comes through the water and then like splits into different you know shafts of light and there's Marissa like a little mermaid herself Aww. actually saw Nemo. That was we my first him. time ever. We, <laughs> we did it. Yeah. is really ultra buoyant. I don't know if it's like <laughs> all the milk I drank or something as a kid, but like I can like swim down like five feet fighting the, you know, anti-gravity, if you will. Yeah. And then as soon as I'm like, oh, there's Nemo, I just start whoop, on like a buoy. Just whoop, back up to the <laughs> you know what? I'm the exact same way though. Like I take a deep breath and I try as hard as I can to go under and then I just whoop. It's crazy. Right up to the surface. Yeah, like gravity either pulls me to the surface of the ocean in either direction. Like yes. at terminal velocity, <laughs> just The self-made floaties that I have <laughs> all over my body restricted me from getting down all the way to the bottom. <laughs> It is remarkable, though, how this place of destruction has become a haven for life now. 
Because the water temperatures of the Sulu Sea provide favorable conditions for the growth of aquatic life, it boasts one of the world's most productive and diverse ecosystems. The Sulu Sea lies in the northern portion of the Coral Triangle, a region popularly called the center of the world's marine biodiversity. This includes 2,000 species of fish, around 400 kinds of marine algae, 33 kinds of mangroves, 16 types of seagrass, and 400 species of corals. One white whale <laughs> balooning around <laughs> near the surface, just half in, half out. The blowhole malfunctioning because of <laughs> your beard. my beard. Coming back, whew, we were exhausted because we had to swim all that distance back to the guest house. Yeah, that was that was absolutely unbelievable. Like, oh my goodness! Woo! Wow, that snorkeling experience was so amazing. I don't know when my Klingon head is gonna go away, but um, it's worth it. <laughs> yeah. We have a very, very, very long journey today of an hour ride, a full hour, I know, it's gonna be tough. And the reason why we're not going that far is because there are no hotels between the next town and our final destination, which is Sandakan. And so we didn't wanna push it. We're gonna take the full hour today, go to that town, then it'll only be like a five hour and 20 minute ride. We're gonna relax a little bit now and then head off. We had a very short day that day, so. Yeah, of riding the motorcycle. <laughs> yeah. One full hour we were going. But before we left, we had an, our last meal with Uday. Oh, And we again. had more crab. It was so good. The seafood that they cook there yeah. is amazing. I didn't expect lunch. It was so nice. This part of the world was leaving a really lasting impression on us. And so we kind of have breaking news. <gasps> breaking news! Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> we are thinking, and we have started the steps to achieve this goal, of starting a tour going around Borneo on yes. motorcycles led by these two, some would say amazing, some other would say babbling, <laughs> people. <laughs> a motorcycle tour around this region of East Malaysia on the island of Borneo. And we are hoping to take you to places just like this, where you can be eating this incredible seafood if that's something that you're into. And you can be going to the tip of Borneo and riding through the jungle paths and seeing all the incredible things that we have seen, such as Mount Kinabalu, Mahua waterfalls, and some really incredible stuff to come. To come, no spoilers though, but yes, that's, uh, it's been absolutely incredible and we are really excited. It is just in the, the, the birthing stage, if you will. You know, yes. we are a galaxy let yet to be formed, but all the gases are colliding and yes. uh, this amazing spectacle will happen. And the magic of all this insanity and beauty, we're, we're aiming for a price tag under three grand. We're looking at around seven to nine days. There's a whole lot of things still yet to be concrete, but we'd love to hear feedback from you. We'd love to hear if you're interested and we are aiming for like November and December of this year. Yes. But if any of this sparks interest to you and you're still riding along with us throughout this next episode and you can start seeing things that are just incredible, please do shoot us an email at two up and overloaded at gmail.com. That's the number two. Number two. Up and overloaded at gmail.com. And we'd love to hear from you. Yeah. We'd love to start organizing our first maiden voyage tour, if you will. And yeah. yes, we are very, very excited to share this part of the world with, with a few of you, and it would be fantastic. Ah. 
So one thing we've been doing to combat this hot weather is when we ride, we wet our little neck buff things. Tim wears it around his neck. I wear mine over my head. Then with like the air vents of the motorcycle helmet, I can feel that breeze and it feels like cold water running over my scalp. It's amazing. Uh, are you okay there? <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> So we said our goodbyes to our new friends that we had met and Uday and Mark, our, yes. our Scottish friends. Yes. And lovely host, great company, had the time of our lives, but then we had to get back on the motor scooter for an enduring one hour journey <laughs> southish. Right. Thank you guys. Thank you. Big bikes. Hey! Oh. Nice. Oh. You guys riding from uh, Kuching or where are you riding from? Okay. Okay. Oh, nice, nice. Okay. Whoa! It's a motorcycle gathering. The view was just a to the town of Lancon, which is a tiny, tiny, I wouldn't call it a village, but it's a small, small town. It's got a little shopping area and a hotel. Yes, and which is just what we like. And it had a very beautiful, awesome, and well-priced hotel there. Thank you. There was a view out of the window. This is true. The hotel had great air conditioning, which is just what we needed. And we were able to have a wonderful rest that evening. Yeah, I went out at night. There was a bunch of birds on a line, right? <laughs> but they were all facing one direction. Yeah, isn't that weird? Insane, but I have no idea why. There was not like <laughs> 99 birds facing that way and one bird, the rebel, facing that. No. no, they all got in line and and it was like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of birds. An insane amount, an absolutely insane amount. Next time, as we continue to ride our motorcycle further along our loop of Sava, we realize that having a functioning motorcycle is extremely important to completing our goal. We hit a bump and then the bike just stopped. but all that will be in the next episode. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give us a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below. Ding, ding. And if you are into Patreon and would like to support us here on our channel, for as little as a dollar a month, you can get exclusive little clips. You can get our videos early and ad free and you can get a postcard sent to you. Get a postcard and if you have signed up, and uh, past or present, uh, and you do want a postcard, just make sure that you 
in the little field in the notes, you put your address because yes. very important for receiving postcards. <laughs> We are not too far away from having a hundred of you kind and generous folks out there being patrons anywhere from the dollar and up. And this is kind of like our little NPR pledge drive, you know, so support <laughs> us. Uh, you don't get a tote bag, but you do get a postcard. This episode and this journey and this adventure that we are on is, is definitely brought to you by viewers like you. So thanks a million to everybody out there and we hope you're enjoying the ride along with us. We'll be seeing you next time. Stay safe, everybody. Bye. Peace. Because we're going to be dropping more details on everything about this tour to come in the following episodes. This is true. We just wanted to get it off of our chest, if you will, yes. that we are loving this part of the world, and we are formally inviting you guys to join us, and we're, we're very excited to see what, what can come of this. 